So at first glance, this is one of those tutorials that feels completely unmotivated, and I don't know if I can convince you otherwise, but uh, I want to turn curves into other curves, and l let me just explain the reason why. So back in the day, I used to watch a lot of three blue, one brown videos, if you know what that is, good. If you don't, pathetic. <laughs> um, but he, he makes these math uh, videos or explanations. I don't, I don't really know what they are. But the point is they're visually stunning and they always use this uh, kind of transition effect that I see him using all the time where he takes one object and turns it into another. And now that we have geometry nodes, uh, we can do that too. So here's a demo file. Uh, we can do a lot more than what I'm about to show you. Uh, but let me just give a demo. So here we have the letter P and here we have a circle. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, we're switching between the two. And, and th this is procedural. So I'm going to show you how to make this a... Uh, network but we could switch this to anything so it could be the letter c it could be like the number one uh it could even be like just random curves it doesn't have to be a letter a number whatever and also i should mention it doesn't have to go to a circle this is just what i happen to use but if i like dive in here and i don't know if there is a uh, curve square let me see curve primitives we have circle spiral quadrilateral that should work let's see if that works it would be embarrassing if it didn't so here's the square and there we go, now it's turning into the number two. So, I mean, I haven't optimized it for shapes that aren't circles, but in general, it works with anything and it's super easy and let, let, let's just get started, okay? This is gonna be a super fast one. So, uh, 3.1 alpha, where we are in 3.1 territory now. So I don't think there's any new nodes that we need from 3.1, but just so you know, and uh, my new for, uh, layout looks super cool. So go to geometry nodes, uh, the cube, make a geo nodes group, delete this. And I just gotta say, I just got back from this like social anxiety, type uh, meetup because you, 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 your boy you, you might think oh smooth talker he talks for 20 minutes at a time whatever just off the fly talking about blender but when it comes uh, to something that isn't blender your, your boy stutters he goes all over the place either way i was just at this meetup and it, it was difficult i enjoyed myself but it was difficult so i need to just kind of like go bl blank for a while and just talk about blender um so how do we turn one curve into another well uh first order businesses we got to save so let's just do that untitled is good enough um and second over order business is if we want to transition between two curves we better have two curves so the first one uh let's just say it's a curve uh, circle i just typed in cube <laughs> circle curve circle and uh you could either use a primitive or you could actually make your own curve just pick a cyclic type curve um so this is one and let's say the other one is just a custom like a letter or number because we do have a node for that so that's convenient so we have a circle and we also have a let's say the letter a or something like that so i'm just gonna center this and actually let's use the easier letter because this actually is made up of two splines and we'll talk about how to make that work uh we have two things we have the letter c and we have circle. How do we transition between them? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these curves. We are going to set position, because if you think about it, to transition, we just gotta you know, change the position of this one to kind of match these positions of uh, these uh, points that make up this curve. We just gotta switch the positions in some sense. So uh, what we do, and thank you, Arendelle, by the way, who I had a couple questions about this with and helped me out. Um, what, what we do is instead of attribute capture, which is what I thought it was, uh, we're gonna transfer attribute. So why transfer? Because we wanna transfer the position attribute, the position of each of these points and set the position for the other. So I feel like I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, but whatever, it's simple. Uh, we transfer attribute. Um, relative to the index. So this is just saying we're going to look at all the points that make up the curve. And for each point, we are going to extract the position. So I'm using a vector because it's X, Y, Z position. Index, we can just leave as is, or you could just, you know, if you're super anal, you could like plug this in. It, it doesn't matter. It uses the default one anyways. Uh, plug it in here and it doesn't work. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the reason it doesn't work, and this, this is actually important, is um, when we look at this strings to curve, and I'm putting in the viewer so we can see it on this uh, note sheet. You can see we actually don't have any data. It's actually just a single instance, which is the problem, right? If we look at a circle, uh, it's actually has curve information made up of 32 points and we can populate that more or less, right? But uh, this one doesn't, it's just an instance. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to realize this instance. We need to have it actually write out the data. That's what this node does. So we're gonna write it out and you can see now it's composed of all these points and it looks sloppy. It kind of looks like uh, the Death Note font, to be honest. Uh, but you can see it's kind of gotten there. And if we want to see this transition, right, all we need to do is we mix this with the original position. So on one hand, we have the position. On the other hand, we have the transferred position. So we have circle and then the letter C. And you can see it kind of works, right? You change it to the letter F. 
It looks sloppy, but you know, <laughs> it works. Um, let's make this look better. But in general, this is the idea. Uh, to make it look better, what's the issue? Uh, what's happening here is we're sending 32 points. So this circle is made up of 32 points. That's the resolution. I can make it more or less. Let me just connect it so you can see. Uh, we can make it more or less, right? We're taking all these points and we're sending them to not that many on the letter C. In fact, only uh, 10 points. Uh, so what we need to do is we just need to bump up the resolution. So if I was to resample the curve, which is just going to give us the same curve, but with more detail in some sense, don't think about it too much. That's not a good explanation, but we're, we're going to resample the curve and bring this up. You can see for a bit, it kind of works. It kind of makes this look smoother. And by the way, if we change this radius of the original circle, the circle won't get as big when we go back and forth. It kind of works. Um, however, uh, we increase this even more, and now we have even more glitches. It's strange. It really is. Um, it turns out the way to fix this, and the issue with this is we have more points here than we have here, so it's kind of sending a lot of them to the same one. We're just going to resample both of these curves, and we're going to use the same number so that we have the same number of vertices on both. Nice and easy. So I'm just going to pick a high number. That gives us a lot of detail. And now we have a nice uh, seamless transition. Beautiful. Couple things. One, it's a curve. You can't see it in like rendered mode. Uh, you could, you could do like a curve to mesh. And let's see if I haven't actually done this before in my experiments, but we're going to curve to mesh. We're going to use the curve circle as the thing. We're going to make it smaller. So we could do it like this. And that actually looks cool in its own right. Um, you know, <laughs> to be honest, this actually looks cooler than the original results. So uh, you could do that. I'd recommend doing that. Uh, but what I did for mine is I just use a fill curve to actually fill in this detail um, in a nice convenient way. Now, this is actually going to introduce its own problem. You think, oh, we're done. You know, we have a circle. It can go to a letter. That letter can also be a number. And that circle can also be something else. It doesn't have to be a circle, as I showed you. You might think we're done. But let's say we take the letter A. Why is the middle missing? Well, if you think about it, uh, the letter A is composed of two splines, right? As I uh, kind of mentioned before offhand, the letter A has this outward spline and this inward spline. Uh, we can't take a single circle and remap, or a single spline, the circle is one spline, and remap it to two, even if it has the same number of vertices. So we somehow need now to map one spline into two, or even in a worse case, you take a letter like, um, I don't, I don't G. G actually has three splines. You wouldn't think so. But G has one circle, two circles, and the outward spine. So we, we need a way to do this. Well, long story short, um, if we know the number of splines, we're just going to take the circle and make the same number of these. So if we have three circles, it can go to three spines. That's going to be the solution in some sense. Um, in every sense. I need to stop saying in some sense. It, like, I feel like it's a smart thing to say. <laughs> like, I like saying it. But um, it doesn't make any fucking sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to instance the circle. In other words, I'm going to make copies of it. How many? Well, that can be determined by this mesh line. Uh, you're like, oh, CG, default cube. Why are you using mesh line? It's kind of weird. Uh, basically, if I take a line, which right now is copying them on the X or Z or whatever axis. Um, if I take a mesh line and have it go from the same endpoint to the same endpoint. And uh, by the way, same as before. Whenever you instance, you got to realize these instances in this case. Um, what was I saying? I was saying, oh, why are you using mesh line? Uh, well, this is just an easy way to make a bunch of copies all in the same spot. So I'm having 10 vertices or points all put in uh, the origin. So in this case, we only need two. No, we need three. And you can see that this actually does it. So again, I have a mesh line, which is just saying make three copies of this curved circle. And it kind of works. I mean, let's visualize this kind of works. Uh, there is one issue with this kind of like popping, like the circle kind of looks weird. Uh, we could talk about that. Uh, but also, uh, if we go back to the letter C, something that only requires a single curve, now we're getting weird results because you only need one spine. Um, so let's just fix that. Uh, what we need to do is we need to say we pick a letter and we need to automatically know how many splines to like populate or copy this to. Um, how do we do that? And this is also a spot where Arendelle helped. So so thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, long story short, uh, if you look at this, so again, it's going to be an instance. We realize this text or this curve um, into actual curve data. Uh, you can see that we actually have spline information. If we pick something that has multiple splines, like the letter B has a circle and then the outer thing, uh, you can see now we have one, two splines, the letter G, three. Um, in other words, if we, we kind of have an index for this and we can use this to find the maximum value uh, which is the number of splines, okay? 
Are you following? Hopefully. Uh, so we're going to attribute uh, which one of these? Statistic. Statistic. This is going to let us take an attribute and know everything about it. Uh, I want to know the number of splines. So I'm just going to pick instead of points, I'm going to pick spline. And what do I want to know about it? I want to know what the highest index is. Again, why? Uh, because um, because I said so. Uh, but because in this realized instance, we have an index for the spline, and the biggest of these numbers is exactly the number of spines. Now, this isn't exactly true, because we do need to technically add one since the index starts at zero, so we just need to shift it. Uh, but we take the maximum, we add one. So again, this is just because index starts at zero. Don't think about it too much. Uh, we take this, we connect it to the mesh line, and now it's going to work. So again, we've done a calculation for the number of splines dependent on this text. And that's going to be the number of circles that we need to transform. So for example, in the letter G, uh, we should now have three that automatically give us this. If we now pick the letter F, which should only have one, uh, we're not going to get wasted splines. Just like that. Um, and I think, I mean, again, because I only tried this live in the uh, tutorial, I think this shouldn't cause any issues with the curve to mesh. But I am curious, and I'm not willing to do it off camera. I'm doing it right now. You got it. Uh, let's bring down the radius. You can always just divide by two to make that queen. Um, where, what am I doing? Yeah, so that works. Uh, I want to try something with uh, multiple splines. So no guarantee this is going to work. Letter G. Ah, it totally works. And it almost looks cooler because you don't have any of the breaking. That's cool. Um, so that, that's the general setup. I think maybe one more thing to consider is let me go back to the fill version of this. That So again, it works. Let me go back to the fill version. So one thing you might notice is, you know, we now have two splines and it works, uh, but we get this weird popping in the beginning. And this is just because of the curve fill. Like the two circles are traveling, but they're very close. So it's gonna fill the area in between them. Uh, we somehow need a way to make it look not glitchy. So let me just talk about that final thing and then we'll get out of here, you know? Um, the way we do this, and this is kind of a sloppy fix, but the way we fix this is we still need these curves to travel and we know the number of splines, uh, but we don't want this popping. So what if I make one of the splines very, very tiny to begin with? And that way the fill will kind of look like a full circle and they're not going to intersect and do any weird stuff. So let's try that. Um, in other words, I'm going to take the index. The index in this case, we're going to be messing with the scale, is going to be referring to the number of copies, or in other words, the number of splines. I'm just going to take that. I'm going to run a bit of math. So I'm going to take the index and just add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, like 0 0.0001. Um, and that should work. I'm not entirely sure, but let's see. Now we connect that to scale. So you can see, uh, I mean, there is this tiny bean there. But either way, uh, we make that number even smaller, I believe. You divide by two and you can make it, I guess we have run into a limit. Either way. We'll fix that in a second. Oh, it's because this isn't all the way up. There we go. Um, you can see we now have a non-intersecting thing, but now it kind of looks stupid. <laughs> um, and the reason is we've taken kind of the outer spline and put it on, it's, it's flipped, long story short. Uh, so quick fix for this is we have the index zero and one because we have two splines. We're just gonna flip those. So I'm just gonna one minus this. So when the index is one, it's gonna be one minus one is zero. When it's zero, it's one minus zero is one. Don't worry about it too much. We just flip it add a tiny bit, and now let's see what this looks like. There we go. So now we uh, have, in some sense, kind of fixed this. And you can use a bit of noise to make this feel a bit more organic and all that. Uh, but that's the thing. And because we have a number of splines determined, I think we can uh, do something bigger. So 1.3. It might not look clean immediately. But you can see, in general, that works. Add in way more numbers. 1.3456. You mix them, and uh, the reason we're getting this is because of this like indexing, uh, scaling thing we're doing. So you do need to kind of make that work if you know you're going to have more. But uh, that's how you transform one thing into another. I think from now on, I'm just going to recommend doing this curve to mesh because it's just so much cleaner. Um, but that's how you do it. And again, I just want to reemphasize, you could pick any two curves. So we've changed the second one a bunch. Uh, but for the first one, uh, let's just, again, pick the quadrilateral. Whoops. Quadrilateral, make that the instance, and now we are transitioning uh, between a square and these. And that square has, uh, you know, parameters. Like, we could change the width, and now it's going to look super weird, but we can do that. So 
Uh, there you go. That That's the node network for this. This is just kind of the basic thing that you can use to make a lot of other stuff. So uh, at this point, I just want to talk about Patreon because we're at the end of the tutorial. And if you guys have made it to the end, statistically, you're more likely to be like, oh, maybe this is <laughs> this is worth it. That's just the truth. But uh, for the people who care, uh, Patreon is a place where you can get blend files like this one. I'm just going to clean it up. Or in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to the original blend file. Um, make that available. You get access to blend files, tutorials early, um, exclusive tutorials. Recently, I made procedural DNA using volumetrics and stuff like that in uh, geometry nodes. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, you could check it out. Uh, pick the tier that suits you. And I just want to thank all 740 to 50 uh, some active patrons currently. So uh, you guys are the main, you know, I don't want to say revenue stream, but that's what it is. You guys are the main reason why I can make tutorials available for free on YouTube. I guess that's a nicer way of putting it. So uh, don't feel obligated to, but if you care, there's a link in the description. Or if that link is broken, go to my website, go to Patreon and uh, check it out. There's benefits. So hopefully you learned something and uh, that, yeah, that, that that's it.